Jesus described. You're either for him or you're against him. So while you're pondering it, you're not an inch closer to eternity. You are either born again or you're not, okay? The big deal is you're standing with God. That's the biggest issue that you need to figure out in your life. So here's my question for you. Are you born again? I think it would take, I can't, I can't simply tell you, you know, just this conversation has made me born again, right? Um, maybe not born again, but maybe want, maybe want. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reason with you one more time, and I appreciate your willingness to hear this out, okay? I'm just going to use your words. You said, I'm going to take a step in that direction. Here's the way God sees it. This is what Jesus described. You're either for him or you're against him. So while you're pondering it, you're not an inch closer to eternity. You are either born again or you're not, okay? And the reason I say that is not to discourage you, but to encourage you, William, make it snappy. Make it snappy, yeah. Yeah, because for two reasons. One, you don't know how long you have, especially if you're being a Marine, man, you're risking life and limb. And you could, besides, let's face it, young people die all the time. But more than that, it's to miss the point, all right? The word gospel, that was, I think, I asked you that question, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Jesus, yeah. it's, it, the word means good news, all right? This isn't just about, okay, I need a ticket out of hell. Uh, this is a system that might work so my kids are well behaved, or I get some inside financial advice. That's not the point. You get to be in a right relationship with your creator. The creator who is holy and yet stoops to save. So sometimes people wonder what God is like. Here's what God is like. You look at Jesus Christ and you see what God is like. You see that God, even though he deserves worship, he came here to serve, not to be served. He came here to die for sinners, not to throttle them. He didn't come to war, go to war. He came to make peace so that we could be reconciled because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. You get to know God. And what is not to love about the God who did the kindest thing for you that anybody could ever do? So it's to, it's to delay, is to put off enjoying God. This isn't a system of philosophy to work out life to find the formula. No, no, this is about reconciliation with the creator of the universe who desires to know you. And God describes salvation that when you come to him humbly confessing your sins, putting your trust in Christ, it's not like he's going to go, fine, whatever, William. <laughs> no, he, he loves to forgive sinners. He loves you. He loves when people come to him humbly like a child. And Jesus says, I will not cast him out. So you're right. I, I, I can't do that. This conversation can't do that. But you could sit here on this glorious day that God has provided for us. And you could think about this thing intensely as if it's more important than a poli sci quiz that you might have to take later today. <laughs> fair enough? That is, that is no, entirely, that is fair. Right. That is fair. Pepperoni pizza for Pete, which in an odd way is a lot like the difference between imputation and expiation. Are you familiar with the difference, Pete? I didn't order a pizza. But it actually in Latin means completely, to completely atone. It's a Latin word, expiationem. And yet an action noun because it comes from the past part of the stem.